Hello and welcome back. In the last lesson, we finished setting up our user endpoint and it's working in all three cases. And so in this last lesson of this section, what I wanted to do is refactor our conditional check slightly to make our API a bit more maintainable. And you can imagine if we had hundreds of endpoints that were needing to have authentication on it or if they were protected and we wrote this out hundreds and hundreds of times, it's just like bad practice in terms of code duplication and all of that. So the strategy that we can use is to write our own custom express middleware that we can use to simply do this work or write this code once, then we can reference it and it will just do the same work over and over again. So very simply, the way we're gonna do this is just above the user get method that we've defined here. Let's just create a function and let's name it require auth. And then I'm just going to assign this to as a function. And for now, I'm not gonna set up the arguments or parameters. Let's just do a console login here. And then I'm just going to type require auth middleware. And I just wanted to show you and so that we can get a visual of what's going on here. And so we've got our function and the way we can do this in, in Node and Express is in these functions that we set up with the, the method, it takes in a string of what the actual root is. And then it takes in a series of middleware functions. And these request handles that we've been writing are just another piece of middleware. But what we can do now is insert a piece of middleware right before the request handler to make sure that as it, it comes in, it's going to hit this the this next piece of middleware before it passes on to the request handler. So to see this in action, we can quickly type require auth here. And because it's a ES6 style shorthand function here, we can just send require auth without invoking it like that. And so let's save our work head on over to Postman and there's no need to log in or anything. I just wanted to show you what's happening here. We get this require auth middleware logged out to our console. We get a hanging request and that's because we indeed see that the API has routed the request to this user. It's passed the request through to this require auth function over here and we've hit this console log. And so that was just a sanity test to see that where and what order the, the middleware that we're writing is going to be hit in. Let's just kill that request so it's not hanging. And now let's finish wiring up this require auth middleware. We're going to pass in the request, the response, and then we'll use the, the next argument here. I'm going to keep the console log in, and I'm going to set up a if statement here, and we're going to say if request is authenticated, then in this case, we'll just call the, the next function to pass on the request to the next piece of middleware in the chain. And if that fails, so if the user is not authenticated, then we can simply copy and paste our return statement with the, the message over here. Then we can just delete that if conditional. And we actually don't require that uh, return statement, so we can just remove that. Um, last semicolons and then that's it that's all we did we just abstracted that conditional we written earlier into its own piece of middleware and we then referenced that require auth middleware just before the request handler of our get user so let's test this out and see if everything is working as expected let's hit this get user endpoint and we do indeed get a 403 back you can see we're hitting our, our auth middleware and just as a, a way of seeing what's going on here, let's just create a console log saying testing request handler. And let's hit that request again. And you'll see that we never actually hit that request handler because of, of this piece of code here, the response status for three, that's actually ending the request response cycle early and we never actually reach this point. So that's a nice convenient way now to have the ability to lock down any endpoint we want. And so we've got a way of creating public endpoints and private endpoints. Any private endpoint, we can just make use of our require auth middleware, which is leveraging Passport. And any public one, like the login request, for example, or if we scroll up to our post, which would be a public endpoint, these, we can just leave out that require auth. And then the, our API knows that it's safe to, to continue with the request. No need to reject it uh, with 403 or 401. Uh, errors. And the very last thing I wanted to do was just to keep our code a bit neater is indeed just to put this require auth middleware at the very top of our file. Ideally in a more production type API, obviously this will be abstracted to different files. This is just for learning purposes. So we'll just keep it up at the top here. And one more request to see if it's working. We'll do a register, a login, and then we will do 
a valid request which sends a 200. So that is it for the bulk of the work that we've done for our Express server implementing the, the local authentication strategy from the Passport Library. We have now got the ability to register user and log in a user, create a valid session, and now we can start writing our API in like full steam ahead. We can have public and private routes. And I hope that this has been a good demonstration and a good overview of how to implement this passport strategy and authentication. The bulk of the work has been done, like I said, well done on making it this far, if you have made it this far. In the next section, we're going to create a very basic front end. We'll, we'll create a, like a static HTML and CSS website, which we can then kind of just test more from the web point of view and see how you will actually do the integration of this authentication flow from the front end side. It's going to be more of just like a basic overview. The main purpose of this course was to actually do this work that we've done in our API. I think we can say the next section is just a bonus part just to kind of see how the, the cookies and the request response cycle works from a different perspective from the front end perspective. And so I'm going to take a break here. I'll see you in the next section. Well done on making it this far. And I, I hope that you've, you've learned a lot and I'll see you on over there. Cheers for now.